Today is a good day. Today we get to play with one of the finest low-profile freshwater bait casters on the market today and quite possibly ever made in this price point. Now, for you guys out there finding me for the first time, I think you might find I do things a little bit differently. What I like to do is do teardowns, comparisons. I'll compare within Shimano's line and two other reels from Dio or Abu, uh, wherever it sees fit. We go over what it does well, what it does poorly, and when I say poorly, we focus like a laser beam on the bad stuff. When you go up to the mechaniums, which is this right here. This is what Shimano brought over. I thought they were bringing over a new design based on the MGL, but they didn't. And it's worth pointing out that I have had to upgrade to brass gear sets on multiple titanium DCs as a result of them going geary. And we're also going to go over uh, how significant this titanium DC aluminum gear is in relation to the Bantam. Uh, that's where things get pretty interesting when you start looking at what these reels weigh and compare them to other reels, such as your Aldebaran. This is their BFS version, which is 4.8 ounces fully spooled. And something like this, which is a Steez that uses aluminum gear, but it doesn't have the tiny teeth. And this thing comes in at around 5.7 fully spooled. Gentlemen, ladies, and anyone in between, I welcome you all. And today we'll be dissecting the internet and finding out as much as we know so far about the brand spanking new, soon to debut, 2020 Shimano Mentanium low profile bait casting reel. And this, my friends, uh, is kenshikuroda.com, which is Takeshi Kuroda's website. And head on over there if you want all the details. This is just going to be a English translated kind of an overview and what I expect out of this reel just by going over some pictures and generally I would never do that but the pictures that he has are so detailed there's quite a bit you can take away from it so scrolling down to the first image looking at it it has a very similar kind of look and feel to the Bantam MGL and if you scroll down further we're going to kind of go back to those if you look here, on the left-hand side of this image is the current Bantam MGL, and on the right is the 2020 Metanium. You can see right off the bat, while they look similar, they're not. And while the, two, the, the current Bantam MGL is one of my favorite reels, the one area which I wish it was a little bit better at was maximum casting distance, which for all intents and purposes, isn't what you always need. But if you're a bank beating fisherman and you're trying to reach a pocket that's on the opposite side of a pond or you're in a corner of a pond, you want to cover a lot of water. If you're deep cranking, throwing lipless cranks, all that kind of stuff, some long distance, long range spooks, you do want that maximum casting distance. And that's the only area that I could really find the Bantam MGL wasn't top notch in. I mean, in terms of refinement, how it felt in hand, how compact it was, its overall heft and feel, all top marks just fell a little bit short and its overall casting performance could have been a little bit better. Looking at this image here, along with some of the others that show the positioning of the level wind, I'm kind of hoping that they push that level wind maybe a quarter of an inch, a couple millimeters further away from that spool which would allow for freer flowing line off of the actual spool itself. Less impediment means longer casting distance. So here's fingers crossed until we actually get out on the water with it, uh, that it's going to actually outperform the Bantam MGL and casting performance, which it look like, it looks like it might. I don't know. So my fingers are crossed. Here we go back up to some other images, top down, and again, comparing it to the Bantam MGL, has a little bit narrower kind of thumbing area or kind of the, the forward thumbing area, uh, which to me makes it look like it's got that level wind guide pushed a little bit further out. Scrolling down here, you now have kind of the top down forward aspect. Kind of makes it look almost Aldebaran ish, but it's, it's a little bit heftier, it's a little bit bigger. Beautiful looking reel cosmetically. It's got the really thin eye-shaped knobs, aluminum handle, looking like it's an aluminum star drag and aluminum drag, uh, sorry, spool pretensioner. And it has the cone-shaped level wind guide, which is always nice to see. 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. That's the one that I'm going to be getting. I love lower, lower gear ratioed reels. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So, the frame itself, the main frame, right? Magnesium. So, comparing it directly to the Bantam, even though it's a little bit different size and shape, uh, we're expecting the frame itself to come in at quite a bit less in overall weight. Just make sure that you're not using this in salt water if you plan on rashing it up. Because magnesium and salt water, I don't care what anybody says, what every manufacturer claim is, whatever your buddy says he's doing, 
Magnesium and saltwater don't mix. Any type of saltwater exposure direct to the frame where you know, a scratch through threaded screw holes. If you maintain your reels and you reset those screws and you scratch up that thread, that's now prone to cancer of the reel. And I've seen it firsthand, saltwater and, and magnesium doesn't mix. Uh, so you're gonna be using this more or less in fresh water along with the handle side plate. So the frame and the handle ace or the side plate that houses the guts, both made of magnesium. Here again are those two frame pieces. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. They opted to go back to a brass main gear and pinion. That excites me because I had to, you know, replace the main gear and pinion gears uh, in my Metanium DCs. The aluminum on brass just didn't hold up. Your ramming hook sets under tight drag conditions. You're pulling out snags. You're just fishing real hard. Something about them tiny little gear teeth and the dura aluminum or their their hardened aluminum uh, main gears just didn't wear well. Didn't stand the test of time. It's very very rare in my arsenal that gets rotated with reels that get constantly rotated in and out that I have damaged gear sets where the only fix is replacing them. That happened with my Metanium DCs, which are very expensive reels. When they first debuted in the United States, they were what, 500 bucks? When they first debuted in Japan, I think I paid like 345 for them. So it wasn't the biggest deal, but, but 2020, they went back to brass, kind of tells you something. If it was a bulletproof design, they would have gladly, gladly went for the weight savings, which he lists here, 10 grams. There's a full 10 gram savings in weight just in the gear if, you, if they'd maintain that aluminum gear. But I'm willing to bet they saw some of the same or similar issues that I did, and it was enough to make them convert back to the brass. So that's very interesting. And I'll tell you what, when I put the brass gears in my DCs, Man, the, the, the refinement, the feel went through the moon. When I first got those Metanium DCs, they cast great. When it comes to the DC reels, you have the longest distance you'll ever achieve in zombie brain mode casting. So they're, they're a pleasure to cast. There's no effort, no thinking goes into the cast. No thumb action really goes into it. But when it came to the cranking performance and the fit finish and fuzzies that you get out of the reel when you're, you know, just fishing it, weren't the best. I've had better. And for a fairly expensive reel, I was kind of hoping it was going to be a, a better, smoother cranker. When I went to the brass, oof, immediately, immediately had that Antares feel, that, that, that kind of heavy, silky, you know, running your finger over the surface of a stick of butter, you know, that super smooth type feel. I'm hoping that that's going to come back to the metaniums because it was missing in the prior generation. The MGL3 spool. Hey, it's a lightened spool. has an excellent brake. The SVS Infinity brake system found from the Corrado K on up is spectacular. When you're looking for control with some lighter lures for short range work, pitching and flipping, I really do like this, this brake system. Take a little bit extra weight out of the spool. It'll handle some lighter baits with a little bit more accuracy. Looks like they changed the actual brake plate from a full metal core to what looks to be a composite. So one can assume the brake is only going to be made, making contact with the metal portion. Uh, and they took out quite a bit just to save weight. Smart there. This is where it gets interesting. You have the metal worm shaft that runs the level wind looking like it's either going to their nylon design or a kind of almite coated aluminum. We're not sure. Uh, going by the Bantam and some other reels that I've had in the past, it may look like the nylon that's found in the Corrado when it is in fact a almite oxide coated aluminum. No way of telling until we actually test it. 
Now, for you guys out there who currently own any variant of the 2016 Shimano Metanium, you're probably wondering how what I already have on the right compares to what's new and incoming on the left in the 2020. This picture is probably the most significant because it shows drastic changes. On the left, you can see front to back, they've trimmed it down significantly. Overall width, the chops of it, the jowls above the spool where your, your thumb glides over the spool, that whole area of the frame has been trimmed down quite a bit. The handle looks to be the same size, but it also looks like that level wind guide may be a touch closer to that spool flange in comparison to the outgoing model. And that does have a pretty large impact in overall casting distance and performance. So, fingers again crossed that it's not going to have too much of an impact because that outgoing model was a spectacular caster. But it's definitely nice to see that they did trim it down because the 2016 Metanium DCs that I've owned, fairly, fairly large, a little bulky. They look cool. They look like race cars from the side. One of the better looking profiles in terms of reels are concerned, at least in my opinion. They look great. They palmed a little wonky. Like I kind of like the feel of some of the Tatula reels, some of this, like some certain Daiwa reels kind of palmed better, at least in my hands. I have just kind of a smaller hand. So, you know, my mitts like that kind of profile better than this. So I'm hoping to get my hands on the new one very shortly. Looks like it's on an X pride and that's about it. So with all that being said, I'm liking what I'm seeing. They went to an aluminum drag star over the CI4, which is on the, the DC versions that I've fished. They trimmed down some weight out of the brake, took a little bit of weight out of here in the level wind worm. All that weight was then put right back into that brass gear, the MGL spool, sorry, the MGL three spool, very well balanced, very lightweight, very speedy spool. Got to be careful when you go down low in the braking on that reel because with light line especially, you will get overruns. I think by light braking, you're talking one shoe on with the dial set anywhere between three and four. That's that's very light braking with MGL3 spool with light braid. We're talking eight to ten pound braid. Overall, I like the looks of it. I kind of wish it had a, a more of an anodized look and finish to it, kind of like what that the Bantam looked like, but I'll, I'll take the gunmetal paint and hope that the paint holds up. Looks like it's got the big squishy septons, but it looks like they have the narrow eye profile. We'll see if there's anything new. And yeah, so it's with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure I'll put the link down below. You go check out Takeshi's website. He's got some of the latest on Shimano gear. And until next time, guys, I'll see you soon. Take care.